The love that the father has for his son is indeed precious. Thanks to be to him, the, one, the love that he has for his people is just as precious. That's because those that God loves are just like his son. Only those who God loves will be allowed to live with him for eternity. You must be exactly like Christ. You can't be anything below him. You have to be faultless, flawless, and perfect. And knowing what a person is outside of Christ and who is not taking on his likeness, it, that's what help gives you the drive to go closer to him. Now, love and fear are two widely known and two very un misunderstood things in this world. Some say that God can love you unconditionally. No matter what you do, he'll still love you. While others say it's the mere fear of the punishment of being eternally damned is what takes you to Christ. But God, he takes this love and he takes fear and he balances them magnificently. And when I first read Brother Bob's text, I immediately thought of the text in Proverbs 3.12, For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as a father the son in whom he delighteth. Now chastisement is correcting the wrong. And while many look at being chastised as a curse or something wrong or an inappropriate or not needed, it's actually a very beautiful work. Jesus himself was chastised. However, it wasn't because that he deserved it. It was because that he took on our punishment and our shame, being willing in doing this. Because the severity of the price of sin, we wouldn't be able to take it. It would have destroyed us and still been able to be unpaid. But Christ, he did take this. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ hath also loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. So we, in being coming like Christ, we also are chastised. But the trouble instead that we have actually will perfect us instead of destroy us. So instead of being corrected to pay the price for sin, instead we are corrected for a better good, which is becoming like Christ. The Father took note of Jesus' way in the which he endured his chastisement and the fact that he took it. Now the Father, he loves his Son because of this. He was well pleased at how he did so. And there's nothing that he would hold back as a reward for him or not give his blessing and for him to do. Now we who are followers of God, God loves us because we have also followed him. We have devoted our lives to him, striving to be like him. How do we know this? Well, think of your lives. Think of how you're corrected all the time. This is God. He doesn't have to correct us, but he does. It is his will for him to correct us. We could remain. He could let us remain ignorant and stupid of salvation and sinful in this world, but he doesn't want to. He wants us to become his sons. For God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we are dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, for by grace ye are saved. So despise not the ch chastising of the Lord, brethren. Don't despise him. Don't grieve him. It is him changing us to be righteous, to be like him. Yes, it will hurt, but trust and hold on to him, because it is not unbearable, and we are to give thanks in all things. The Father takes note on how we're going to endure this chastisement, and we want to please him. For then does he love us, but not only does he love us, but he loves us like he does his own son. So do his will from the heart as unto him, knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive from the Lord, whether he be bond or free. Amen. Amen.